In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of Viewport Canvas. Viewport Canvas allows you to paint directly on a model. Now, one of the big things you need to understand first is that your model has to have UVs on it. I'm going to come over here and assign an unwrap UVW to the model. You see here the green lines that show up on the model. Those are map seams. If I open up the UV editor and I turn off the checker pattern, you see that this model does have its UVs laid out. I'm going to go into Polygon here, click in negative space so I have nothing selected, and do Select Overlap Polygon. You see that quite a few polygons are overlapping. If I move my model over to the side, you see that basically all the limbs are overlapping. That's because what I did was I stacked the left side, the positive X side, and the negative X side of the model. So that means that anything that we paint on either one of the limbs is going to show up on both sides. The torso itself is uniquely UV laid out. So that way we can have unique uh, options there. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to, going to just, I'm going to remove that. I'm actually going to dump that UV unwrap because I already baked that into the model. That's permanently baked into the UVs. All right, so here's my character. Here's the model. I'm going to go ahead and start off right here inside 3ds Max. I have my character selected. I'm going to do Tools, Viewport Canvas, and I'm going to pick a map to paint on, which will be my diffuse color. Now, because I don't have any map assigned to it, the Create Texture dialog pops up. So I'm going to set it to a default to 2048, keep the background color gray, and then I'm going to click on the dot, dot, dot in order to specify a location for my texture. Here I've navigated to the same location that my model is located. So I'm going to do VC for viewport canvas underscore demo underscore D because this is the diffuse texture. I'm going to come down here and save this as a Targa. Actually, I'm going to save it as a PNG and hit save. I'm going to keep it as an RGB 24 bit and hit OK. And now I click OK and I'm ready to start painting on my character. So I'll just come up here. You see when I click diffuse color, there's a diffuse color that's assigned to the character. If I open up the material editor and use my eyedropper and click on the character, you see that there's a texture or a material that now has this diffuse texture assigned to them that's in that location. If I come up here to paint, notice how the display changes because it's only showing the diffuse on the character. I'm going to switch to consistent colors and I'm going to turn off edged faces. Later versions of Max, the uh, display is a little bit differently, but if you review my uh, viewport labels notes, you can find where those options are. So first thing you want to do is add a new layer. On a new layer, that's where you're going to want to do your painting. So it's good to go into the paint process with an idea of what it is you actually want to paint on the character. Uh, you always want to make sure you're painting on a new layer. Uh, let's go in. We can actually click on the color select and actually keep that open. That's something we can actually go in and uh, keep that open at all times. I can come in here and just paint. You see that as soon as I get down to those stacked areas, that's where things carry across. Right, so if I undo that, I can do whatever I want on the face because that's unique. Same with the torso. But it's areas like the hands and the limbs, and the hands, hands, the arms, and the legs where things are mirrored. All right, and that's because the UVs are stacked on top of each other. You could actually open up the 2D view to see what you're doing. And you could actually, if you wanted, you could paint directly on there. Uh, one of the downfalls of that is if I, let's find a spot on our character. If I were to come down here and paint, you see how it doesn't paint onto the leg, as opposed to if I paint here, it would continue onto the leg. Now, part of the issue we're running into again is the torso is unique and the legs aren't. If you did want to paint on both sides, you could go in and turn on paint behavior to turn on mirroring, and then it would mirror across. 
Now everything we're doing right now up until this point is all being buffered in here. Nothing's being saved. When I right click, that's when the software wants to save. Now at this point, 3ds Max does not allow you to save a PSD file natively, meaning like by default. So at this point, we've added a new layer and we want to save it with a layer. And you do see there's an option to continue painting, which is just going to let you continue to paint on your character. But what you have to do is at some point you got to save it. If you right click and if you save as a PSD file, what will happen is your character is going to go back to the flat gray. The material we set up is referencing that PNG file. And so what you want to do is you want to save a PSD and you want to replace the texture inside the material. So if I click here, it's going to bring up a dialog and I can go to that location on the desktop where my viewport canvas is set up and I can do VC underscore and look, it has the same name as before. All I need to do is just remove the underscore D. It's a PSD file. And now when I save, there my texture shows up. If I open up the material editor, you'll see that it's now referencing that PSD file instead. And if I was to go in here, I could delete that underscore D PNG file because I'm not using it anymore. What I'm using at this point is that PSD. And so I can go through and I can continue painting on my character. There's lots of great options and tools in here for you to work with. Uh, if we go back in and go to paint, we have our 2D view. We don't need to have that open. We can turn that off. Uh, we could also, if we want to make a new layer, we could do fun stuff like we could actually create a gradient. All right, we can actually have gradients inside here. Let's pick a color. We do a gradient from the top to the bottom. All right, we could also go through uh, if we want to just do a general fill on the entire character. Let's pick another color here. Make a new layer. We'll just do a fill and that'll fill the entire thing. And then we could take our color and we can actually work on this uh, to do, change it so it works with different blend modes as well as opacity. All right. So we can come in and make a new layer and we can continue painting on our character. Oops, didn't want to do that. I wanted to switch to paint. I still have my mirroring on. If I hold control shift, that'll allow me to make my brush radius larger. Control shift, bring it down. If I do alt shift, that'll adjust the opacity. So if I want to make it a little bit more transparent. And then alt control will adjust the hardness. If you want to get a really hard edge in there, you can do that as well. So again, all you need to do is just right click because at this point we've already updated the material and the texture as a PSD file and all those elements are being saved together. So uh, you could close this at any time. Let's get out of there. We'll turn that back to shaded. Now you can see him with his full texture assigned. Now what you do see is you do see a little bit of this artifacting happening. And there's a way around that. And I'm going to show you how we can uh, get past that by uh, a way to deal with that sort of texture artifacting. So uh, I'm going to pause this and open up Photoshop. All right, here I have the PST file. I've opened it up inside of Photoshop. Uh, one thing that I can do is if I wanted, I could actually come in here inside of Photoshop I could go through and I could continue painting on my character inside of Photoshop. So I'm on brush. I'm just going to paint a little question mark here. And then I'm going to save. All right, so I've saved my file. If I go over to 3ds Max, there you go. You can see that the texture is updated. If I select my character and I go tools, viewport canvas, and let's go into paint. Uh, if I have that and I want to kind of change it, maybe I don't really like, or maybe I want to do a little bit more. Let's do, uh, let's paint, let's 
let's make this, uh, I want to go into opacity and make this fully opaque and do some cool little symbols on its back like that. All right. All right, so we've kind of gone in and done that. I'm gonna right click to save that. Now, every time we save that, that's not saving the max file, that's saving the PSD, which is a separate file. If I come over here and you see in Photoshop that nothing has changed. And so if you paint, if you're going back and forth between Photoshop and Max, you have to keep in mind that you have to close the image here in Photoshop and reopen it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pause and close it and reopen it because otherwise what happens is if I come in here and I go, what happened to that detail on the back and save it, I get this error. And it tells me the disk copy was changed since you last opened or saved it. Do you want to save anyway? Well, if you save anyway, what's going to happen is this. If I save anyway and I come back to max, I orbit around, I just lost everything I painted in here because I just went ahead and I saved over it anyways. And so if you're gonna work going back and forth between Max and Photoshop, you should really plan to close the texture each time you're done inside of Photoshop. So let's save that again. Come back to Mac, Photoshop. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this and then reopen it. So I'm gonna pause. And now I closed the image and now I reopened it inside here. And now we can see that texture is updated. All right, so that's the basic process for going through and painting a texture between the two. Now, one thing that you will notice inside 3ds Max is that you do see this, what we call seam bleed along the edge. Now it'll show up here in the viewport. If we click render, it still shows up a little bit here. There is one way to work around that. And so I'm gonna take all of my layers, except the background, I'm gonna select them all and hit this little folder. And so that puts them all into a group. I'm gonna use the shortcut Control Alt E, and that's going to take everything and put it, that's in the group and put it in one layer. And so if I hide all the other ones, you see that everything here is everything that has a texture on it. So I'm gonna hold Control and click on group one. And now if I do, you can't see it, but up at the top, I'm gonna select inverse. So I select all the negative space. And you also can't see this because I'm going to add, sorry, this is getting cut off, but edit, fill. And I wanna fill with content aware. So I'm gonna click okay. What that does is it's gonna look at the entire image and fill with pixels that are around there. And this is a really great way for you to go in and to create uh, overlap or what we call seam bleed kind of going out there. So I'll do control D to hide that. And then I'm just going to move this underneath group one and then turn group one back on. And then I can keep going and painting and I can always go back and replace this sort of background. I'm going to do a uh, call this seam bleed. There we go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save that and I can go back to Max and keep working on my model. You'll see when, he show, when I go in there now, you don't see that. And really it's just uh, the software tends to go in and make smaller ver pic version pixel size. And uh, sometimes it just helps to have that seam bleed in there uh, on your models. So there you go. That's uh, how you work with Viewport Canvas.